Cephalopods kind of suck in the fossil record, with the exception of ammonites and the nautiloids, because they have plenty of shells and we can find them pretty regularly. Although only the nautiloids still live today, and that's really telling about their larger diversity, this is because today there are only 11 species of nautilus, of which 7 can only be told apart based on their genetics. Meanwhile, there are well over 300 species of each of the other modern groups of cephalopods, those being squid and octopi. That said, there's one more fossil group of cephalopods that is pretty well known, those being the belemnites. Belemnites had a gladius that extended into a rostrum. The gladius is most easily seen in cuttlefish, where it makes up the cuttle bone. It's literally just the shell that they moved inside of their body. In belemnites, this gladius would have extended into a kind of rostrum on the edge of the body, and we haven't had a lot of great ideas about what they necessarily were exactly like. And that's because most of the time we really only find these parts of that rostrum. However, occasionally, such as in places like the Blue Lias in the southern part of England, you can find more of them, such as ink sacs that even Mary Anning would have found when she was looking for fossils in the early 1800s in the region. Because there's not always a ton of material for them, it's been really hard to say how large some of them, including things like Megatuthis, the largest one, which I will talk about here in a moment, could have gotten. Fortunately though, there are some fossils from France of Pasalotuthis, which is also a belemnite, and is preserved with even some of the tentacles preserved, so really, really great find for understanding their anatomy, and they were largely squid-like. This paper was looking at some of those fossils from France to try and understand what kind of deformation had happened to the phragmacone, the phragmacone being part of that rostrum that extends into the body and helps anchor everything together. From this, they were able to look at these fossils that are each about one foot long or around 30 centimeters and extend them slightly, and then understand the shape of that phragmacone and how it relates to the overall size of the organism. And from that, they made some very simple models to try and apply that to other belemnites. And by very simple models, I mean they literally just rolled up paper and made it into the correct shape of a phragmacone to see where the different anchoring points that are important would have been. And this is still totally valid science. You don't need to use a computer and 3D modeling for everything. Sometimes just using paper helps to show what you're talking about just as well. Those measurements for the phragmacones were then applied to larger belemnites such as Megatuthis. And Megatuthis is really interesting because one of the fossils of it includes the phragmacone. And that phragmacone and rostrum is about three feet long, a little bit less, but almost the size of my four-year-old, who is admittedly a short four-year-old, but still, that is a very large animal when you're considering that's just a portion of the body. By scaling up these measurements to Megatuthis, they found that Megatuthis could have potentially been as long as nine feet, or over three meters in length. This is also just the higher estimate. Some of the other estimates put it closer between six and seven feet, so just a bit over two meters, which is still a very large animal. Additionally, another species of Megatuthis would have been closer to four and a half feet, which is still pretty large, about a meter and a half. This overall suggests to me that they are probably fairly similar to the modern day Humboldt squid which largely live slightly offshore, but still on the deeper parts of the continental shelves, and have made a lot of news in certain ecological circles as they're well adapted to low oxygen environments, meaning that as they're spreading north in the face of climate change, they're suddenly predating on a lot of organisms that just aren't prepared to be predated upon in low oxygen environments, so they are causing some problems. But also importantly, the Humboldt squid has reportedly killed people. It has actually pulled fishermen out of their boats in parts of Mexico, and then as a swarm, they just kind of end up eating the person, which is horrifying. However, some people have gotten out of that and they do have the scars to show for it. It's, again, just a little bit horrifying how powerful even just a six foot or even a four foot long Humboldt squid can be. That said, if you were somehow transported back to the Jurassic of Europe, you wouldn't really be that concerned about Megatuthis as it would likely live further offshore than where you would likely be swimming, but also there'd be other things to watch out for, like the giant marine reptiles that would eat Megatuthis. So, not as horrifying as it might be if you went back there, but still a concern. 